Okay, welcome back. So I'm gonna show you how to create website buttons using Photoshop. So as a background, I literally started learning Photoshop about a year ago, so I feel like I have that perspective of knowing what it's like to start from absolute zero and having to watch a million tutorials and kind of taking forever to learn the process. So I'm gonna try to make this as simple as possible so that you can learn as fast as possible. So the first step is to point out that there are about four steps for every button. There is the background gradient, the upper sheen, the lower glow, and text. Outside stuff or text like drop shadows, reflections, or metallic rings. So let me pull up a few pictures of these just to show you what, what I mean. So the first step is to get a background gradient. And a gradient is just a gradual change between two colors. So here we have a lighter red changing to a darker red. That's the first step. The second step is to get an upper sheen. So this kind of white area up at the top. Notice here some more examples, upper sheen and the background gradient in the background. Notice also that the upper sheen is indented a little bit. Here we have the iPhone that has the upper sheen. Notice the difference between these two icons. One major difference is that this one has the upper sheen and these do not. Okay, here's some more examples of just a simple upper sheen and, and background gradient. Here's some more examples, upper sheen, uh, upper sheen, upper sheen. Here's a metallic ring. More examples, notice that the upper sheen is indented a little bit. Okay, now the third step is to have a lower glow. Here's a good example where you have the upper sheen, you have a, a background, kind of a gradient blue, um, and then you have a lower glow. So on the lower area, there's some kind of different color. Now, there are variations, of course, with every button, but these are just principles for you to hang on to. Here's another good example. We have the upper sheen, you have somewhat of a lower glow, and you have a background gradient or color in the background upper sheen, lower glow, and the black is the background. Same thing, upper sheen, lower glow, background gradient. Now sometimes you'll see a secondary reflection here. Um, that's just kind of a, a thing you can do for style. Um, I'll show you an example of where I did that. If you look at the Windows icon, you have your upper sheen, you have your lower glow, and you notice that both of these are indented a little bit. There's a little bit of space from the outside. And then the last step, the fourth step is to either have text or some kind of metallic ring or reflection or drop shadow. Here's just an example of having that metallic ring. Metallic ring. Here's some more types of metallic rings with various gradients on them. Another metallic ring. So this is what this is basically what I'm going to show you how to make. That little secondary reflection is right here is what I was talking about. And I'll also show you how to create some kind of metallic ring for circles. Okay, here we go. Our first step in creating the button is to choose a round or rectangle tool. So I picked that. Notice that the radius is 153. If I want to have more rounded edges, I can increase that number and it'll look more like a pill or just the edges will be more rounded. So I'll pick about 170 or so. And then I want to fill it with a gradient that automatically completes my first step. Now I'll choose the colors, so the darker color say I'll pick like a darker red and the lighter color I'll have a, a lighter red okay voila I just finished my first step next step is to create the upper sheen so let me show you how to do that um, just to show you what this principle does let me paint on, on a new layer and when I command click on this layer and then it just selects everything in that layer. So that's the principle I, I just wanted to show you. So let me go back to here. I will command click on the button, on the layer, and it selects the whole layer with these marching ant things. Now what I want to do is I want to delete this bottom half and only have the top half remaining. So I click on the box marquee tool, hold down option to subtract, and I create a box on the bottom. That will delete the bottom half and only leave the top half. Now I have this top section, so I create a new layer, and then pull out my brush tool and then I paint on some white. So that's my second step. Now if I wanted to indent my upper sheen a little bit then before I do this, let me go back, before I paint on I need to go to select, modify and contract. Let's say about 10 pixels. So now my selection has contracted, now I can paint on the upper sheen. 
we turn down the opacity a little bit. Okay, so that's my second step, that's the upper sheen. Next step is to get the lower glow. I'll create a new layer. And I will paint on some cool red. Now that's a little bit strong. I can change the different blending modes to make it kind of blend better. Turn down the opacity. I can also throw on a Gaussian blur so that it doesn't seem so strong and definite. Okay, once I do that, now I have my lower glow. Now the next step is to have the text or any kind of outside stuff. So what I do is press T for text, say contact. Okay, now, so I have my text, I can throw down a drop shadow, so I double click to the right of my text layer. Click on drop shadow. That looks pretty good. Um, I think I want to resize this a little bit. Okay. I can also put any kind of drop shadow on my button. So to the right of the button, I click on it. Let's say I want to put a drop shadow or an inner shadow. Let's click on that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so that's the fourth step. So to finish the fourth step, I can also put a reflection. Let me show you how to do that. So what I do is I click on all these layers and hit command G to group them all together and move it up a little bit and then if I click option drag that will duplicate that layer then command T right click to flip it vertically and then my last step is to make it kind of disappear so if I take a look at this one notice a reflection is basically just an upside down version of a picture so that's why I made it upside down the last step is to make it semi-transparent. So in order to do that I click on my mask and normally I can paint on the mask and make it disappear but that's going to be hard to make it really smooth so in order to do that I have to use the gradient tool and paint on black on the gradient tool. So there you go. What's really going on is I have painted a gradient on the mask which translates into making it look like that layer is being deleted. So that's how you create a simple button. Okay, now let's create a simple ring if you want to do that. So if I go to ellipse tool, start creating, start dragging, then I hold down shift to make it equidistant, hold down option to go from the center, and hold down spacebar to move it where I want. Okay, I will fill it with let's say a green color. Now what I want to do is I want to duplicate this so right click duplicate layer and I'm going to turn off the one in the back so that you don't get confused. The second one is going to be my ring and I'm going to do that by deleting the inside part and only have the outside part remaining. So in order to do that I hold down option just like before where you delete things hold down shift to make it equidistant and spacebar to move it around where I want. Okay, so that has subtracted the middle part, so I just have this ring. If I turn back this other layer, then it looks like one giant circle, and that's why I didn't want to get, get you confused. So if I double click on this, I'm gonna get the layer style. I'm gonna change the color to kind of a light, light gray. Okay, now I can turn this back on. So now, go back to here. In order to get the ring, it's basically just beveling and embossing. And it really, so you turn up the depth and the size, and you get that. The real secret is to go to the gloss contour and choose either single or double. And that's how you get your ring. It's really simple. Okay, let's say I like that. Let me put a 
gradient on this. Let me change the colors back to green. Okay, and there you have your ring. If I wanted to create a reflection, let me do it again, Command G. Let me make this a little bit smaller. I just hold on Option, drag it down, put a mask on it, pull out my gradient tool, and there you go. If you wanted, you can put a little background on there. That's about it. Um, I could also put a drop shadow on it. So that's basically how I got this little logo. You have your drop shadow. There's no reflection, but you have your drop shadow and then you have the metallic ring. And that's it. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you can take these four steps and when you're creating your own buttons, have kind of a, a basic outline of what direction you should go and what steps you should take. So, good luck.